Hey, it's William Christopher Ford, 52 Masters. This episode, Kyokushinkai Karate with Shihan Tom Callahan. That being said, let's get to training. Us. I am 51 years old. I've been a practitioner of Okinawan Shodin Ryu Karate since I was seven. There was some who would call me a master. I assure you, I am not. I believe that the true expert is someone who still has a student's heart and a beginner's mind. This year, to celebrate turning 52, I'm setting out to learn from 52 other disciplines, each from its own master. Some things I've tried before, others, I'm a first-day beginner, like anyone else. 52 weeks, 52 new skills. I'm William Christopher Ford, and this is 52 Masters. face punching, I want to work on some motion, uh, self-defense later, uh, I want to talk about breathing, I want to talk about speed, I want to talk about accuracy. So we're going to have fun tonight, just talk through things, and these guys are all champions, so everyone's front row. So uh, we're in the safest place in town, man. Yeah, you're in the safest place in town. <laughs> and it is uh, really my honor to be here and to share this time with you. Thank you very much. Yes. So, you notice when the punch is holding. When the punch is here, I'm not blocking it, I'm not doing anything fancy, I'm just deflecting. It's almost like I'm shaving his arm. So he's punching here, and this. I can't fight this way though. This is what you see a lot of guys fight like this. Look where he is on me, he's throwing punches. He's going back here for the ball, come here, look where I am. I do not want to be here. I need to keep maintaining my distance. I need to keep my hands up. So he's throwing punches. So, I keep my distance, it's a deflection. Again, let's go slow. This one, go slow. This one. Soft. This is soft. He's going to be exhausted. This is all it is. It's going to save your ass in the fight. So, you don't have to do all these blocks. It's just oh. 
So I'll throw it to my head and I'll hang it this way. So I just want to demonstrate. It doesn't work with him. So you need to use all of this. Just, it's just easy. No, no power. It's the weight of the drop of the voice. So, yes, so the power is not boom, boom, boom. It's. Okay, we're going to do his arms. And then we're going to sit, and he's just going to do my legs. In, one, two, Okay? So we'll do the arms first, then we'll do the legs. Two, three. One, two, three. Okay? You have to have a strong body. Keep it as you can sit. Work each other, work each other. Give each other some room. He was a little nervous coming in here. I thought he did an awesome job. Uh, this is uh, an amazing group. I would say very inspired by everybody. I mean, it is truly an honor to share this with Tommy with you guys. Uh, and I walk away with, uh, I respected you guys before I came here, and now my respect is exponentially growing. One of the things uh, that I know everyone's in this room, and we come from different organizations, we've trained together a number of times, but we're all one. It's a family, Kilchin is a family, despite the different factions that branch off. We all know the history, we all know the politics. But we step in this dojo, or Petrov's dojo, or Shulman's dojo, anyone's dojo. We're all one. It doesn't matter. We all share the same Uno spirit, and that's what we need to maintain, especially in the West, with everything that's going on in the martial arts. And there's a fat sort of aspect to the martial arts, but we need to keep the position of Uno in here that we share with our students. Let's <laughs> 
Feeling. I'm feeling good, believe it or not. I was actually really kind of nervous about uh, showing up for this class, and uh, but you know you got to show up, you know, because you hear about you know it's like ah oh, you know kill machine man I don't know and uh, you know what a great bunch of guys they were um, you know quick explosive powerful but everybody was humble and just I mean true warriors and yeah. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I very impressed with everybody. And there's just a, like a lot of cool stuff going on and, and stuff that I, th I think a lot of people don't realize that Kyokushinkai has, for sure. Such as what? Well, there's, <laughs> you know, there's the, the soft part of it. There's the, um, the, I know you guys work with weapons. There's, um, people think there's maybe six kata, right? And mm -hmm. what is it, like 20? We have a lot. We have 26, 28, and we keep expanding because we add some more kabuto. Mm. And yeah, there's a, mis there's a misunderstanding, I think, a little bit about that. Mm. Kyokushin, that, uh, that we're just a bunch of brutes that are more or less just kickboxers, and we fight bare knuckle and all that stuff, full contact. But no, we, we do a lot of other stuff. We, mm. do, we do a lot of kata, and we have our own, not our own philosophy about it, but of course, the, we appreciate and we understand why kata is so important. Mm. And uh, we do uh, Iken training, which is uh, Kancho Oriyama, my teacher, mm. uh, has, does a lot of Iken internal training, which helps us with a lot of explosive power. Okay. Yeah, explosiveness mm. is what um, uh, these guys, you know, it was just like out of nowhere, this power comes out of, mm. and it's quick and it's relaxed. And, you know, when you were demonstrating the hitting against my body and I felt it in my back, you know, mm. I mean, it didn't hurt, but I was just like, it was so heavy, and you were just so relaxed, and you did it so effortlessly, you know? It was pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, um, uh, martial arts as an art, and the tradition of the art versus the sport, is a totally different animal, mm -hmm. you know? And, um, and a lot of the, I think a lot, not only the teachers, but I think a lot of the Western way we do things with the martial arts today, they don't really get to the depth of how. Hmm. the mechanics of why that hurts your back. Mm -hmm. You know, for yeah. example, the, about the weight distribution, how you drop the weight or mm. the shoulders relax, whatever the technique is. Too often now we see everybody just smacking the hell out of the bags, doing the bag work, doing the bag work, getting yeah. the stamina, and they're strong and they're coordinated, but there's so much more. Mm. And there's so much more technique and where the technique comes from right. and how we apply those techniques. And this is why, this is the art part of it, you know, yes. and why it takes so long to actually be good at it. Mm -hmm. it you can't be good at martial arts quickly. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a process. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lifelong process. Yeah, yeah. You know? well, <laughs> <yes>. <laughs> yeah. I want to take you back to, um, uh, you, you were born in Boston, raised yep. in Boston, yep. and that's where you had your first exposure to martial arts, which I believe is uh, Wechiru. Wechiru. Uh, oh, and Okinawan style. Um, what brought you into the martial arts, though? You know, I, I know that your father was a boxer, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, you were a scrapper. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not saying I was you were... small and I was skinny, and I had a lot of anger management problems. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you know, you know, and I and we moved a few times. So mm -hmm. when you move, um, you know, you experience a little bullying here and there. Sure. And uh, you, in, in where I grew up, you know, you you were tested by fighting, mm -hmm. you know, and then you get picked, not picked on was not the right word, you were, they wanted to see if you could fight, I mean, yeah. it was just a normal thing, sure. and, and I also, honestly, had some anger management issues back then, and, and so, yeah, I fought a lot, mm -hmm. and so my dad said, oh, we should put you in the martial arts, I was 11, it was 1972, Okay. and there was one school in Reading where I grew up, and it was a Weichiru school, and they wouldn't accept me because it was an adult-only class, mm. only adults. And I was just a little, I think I was maybe 80 pounds or something. Mm. And um, finally they relented and, uh, and allowed me to, to, to join the school. And you just... I yeah, loved it. You did it with the adults? I loved, yeah, I trained the adults. Interesting. Yeah. And back then, as you know, coming from an Okinawan-based style, all those styles back then, everything was full contact. Mm. You know, when you, and you kick to the groin, you hit to the face, all that. 
Right. Now, of course, it's a point system. Uh, Kyokushin obviously maintains its full contact status, but, but a lot of the karate these days is a point system. Sure. But back then, from Goju to Uechiru, everything, it was all full contact. And the Uechiru mm. is you know, known for the body conditioning, mm. you know, I mean... Some um, of the arm pounding that we did today, I got that from Uechiru, that's not a Kyokushin thing. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, I took that from Uechiru. Yeah, that was pretty cool, and I did definitely felt my arms getting warm near the end, but <laughs> it was... Mine too. It was pretty <laughs> awesome. Reminds me back of, you know, of me back in the day when I used to train, uh, you know, as a, as a kid too, but, you know, we were hardwood floor, you mm -hmm. know, and, and my sensei, you know, he, he pushed us and yeah. uh, we loved it, you know. Mm -hmm. I guess we were crazy. <laughs> so um, you went from Uechiru and then you did that for a few years, but, but you left. You moved? Or what? Yeah, my, the dojo moved. Okay. And my mom didn't want to drive me that far away. Okay. It moved like about 15 miles or something. Okay. But I always was doing something. I was always athletic, and I, you know, my dad did some, you know, did box and boxing, and my uncle was a Golden Gloves boxer, and so we're always just kind of we were just rough kids, you know, yeah, yeah. and uh, played sports and uh, did a lot of wrestling and did some judo, uh, and then later in life I did some other styles as well mm. before I got into Kyokushin in the mid '90s. You know. How did you discover Kyokushin? Um, it was the, when I, it was, clo it was closest to my house. It was a Kyokushin school close to my house. And you know, when you train, as you probably know, convenience is important. Yeah. To be consistent. Sure. It has to be convenient because mm. um, you just won't go. Yeah. You know, there's too many things getting in the way. So yeah. I think it's important to, to um, you have to be consistent when you train. And, and if the dojo is close by, you're going to have more, you're more apt to train more regularly. So it was convenience, really. Mm. And I had a really good teacher. My first teacher um, was excellent and taught me a lot of the... I already had a background, you know, I already knew Sanchin, I already mm. knew Zankotsudachi, I, I knew a lot of the stuff. Yeah. But I was introduced to Kyokushin and my teacher was very, my first teacher was very good and te uh, technician. Mm. And I was grateful for that. But I ended up leaving and doing some other stuff, but that happens. But at some point, I think, um you fell in love with Kyokushin, you know. Yeah. I mean, you just, you just weren't doing it. It seemed like it became a passion because mm -hmm. I, I can see that in your, in your being and just you know, who I, you are. My, you know? One of my students drove me here tonight, and we actually had this conversation in the car tonight about you, the idea of loving being a karataka or buddhaka, mm -hmm. but or actually loving it. Mm -hmm. There's a difference of the idea of it, like, oh, I love being a karate guy. Or do I love karate? <laughs> it's a difference, right? Yeah. Um, so I know a lot of students that like the idea of it, mm -hmm. but uh, don't commit properly. Hmm. You know, so you have to you have to commit to it. Right, uh, right, but right. the commitment comes from love. It doesn't come from uh, a necessity. It comes from you. You can't help it. You love it. It's like a musician that has to play or a writer that has to write. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to put that gear on. Uh, if I don't put my gear on for a period of time, I really like, oh, I get really weird, mm. you know. So you've been doing Kyokushin Kai for how many years Not now? that long, 23, 24 years. Oh, that's it? Yeah. Ah, okay. Well, I mean, it doesn't <laughs> seem like long. I know, I know some guys, I know guys who train for way longer than me. Well, um, I'm just grateful that I had a little bit of background as I walked into Kyokushin because mm. uh, I kind of moved up kind of quick. I've been really fortunate to have excellent teachers, and mm. I really, that's what it's about. That's why when I teach, I really want to make sure I teach properly, mm -hmm. as best I can, yeah. uh, because it's so critical to, 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 to teach well, yeah. because the students are going to go on and teach, or, you know, or they have the, the, the knowledge has to be passed down with integrity. Mm -hmm. And so it's, I, I feel a serious responsibility to be a good teacher. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I always train, I always practice, and I always try to improve my own self so I can, when I teach, I'm teaching properly. And I learned that from my teachers because I have good, I had great teachers. So I try to learn everything I can and distill it. Yeah. Distill it down to what works, the essence of the technique and the essence of what you're trying to accomplish. Mm. I'm not always right. <laughs> I, I do my best. <laughs> well, I, I dig that. Um, mm. What does uh, Kyokushin Kai mean? What is the, the translation? Of Kyokushin, the translation is ultimate truth, ultimate reality, mm. which is really important to me. I have a tattoo to my chest, and it is a reminder for me, um, not about the fighting, not about anything else, but the, the, the words ultimate truth mean a lot to me. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it, to me, it means 
you know, who are you? It, it, the question begs, who, who are you? Mm -hmm. And when you know yourself, know thyself as Socrates said, mm -hmm. that's the ultimate truth. Knowing yourself is the ultimate truth. And one of the ways we get to know ourselves is through this really difficult training. You overcome these obstacles that you don't think you can. Yeah. And as you overcome these obstacles, it's, 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 it's the same tenet in almost all martial arts. Once you can overcome these obstacles and you realize you grow little by little by little, you start learning about yourself. Mm. And, um, and that's what life is all about, right? You, to know yourself as best you can. <laughs> <laughs> How does um, like a beginner come in? Like, let's say somebody who does not have any martial arts experience and says, you know, they come in and they say, oh, I, I like, I want to I start taking karate. And um, how do they condition themselves? I mean, I'm not just talking about, you know, the cardiovascular conditioning, but the body conditioning, mm. you know, can be daunting. And um, is that just something where it's like, okay, come back tomorrow. And then they just do it. And then pretty soon it's like, oh, this doesn't bother me anymore. Is yeah. it? You know, your body conditions very quickly, as you probably know. But mm. obviously with a new student, we don't, we, we, it has to be gradual. Mm -hmm. and, and they understand, you know, you start educating them about what the style is and how we train and what it's about and why we train this way. Most importantly, why. And um, yeah, you, when we're doing arm pounding or leg conditioning or anything, body conditioning, of course, with the white belt, uh, we do it, but much more lightly. And then mm. little by little by little, I mean, um, you know, you don't just go break a baseball bat with your shin mm -hmm. without conditioning your shin. Mm -hmm. It's the same, same concept, sure. yeah. I think there's also probably a, um, a psychological shock, an emotional shock that happens where it's just like, I just got hit, you know? And even if it's in the body and just going, this kind of hurts, but once you get past that, you know. This is why Sosai Masayama said there's no truth without real fighting. Mm -hmm. and what he means by that is you have to know what it's like to get hit. And as important, you have to know what it's like to hit something full contact. Mm -hmm. Because in a real situation, you, get, you can't hear very well. You get tunnel vision and you yeah. don't hear. Mm -hmm. And it's because you get hit and it shocks you. Yeah. And your cortisol goes through and you just get freaked out. Right? Sure. So if you condition your body and you get used to being hit, and you do get hit in a fight, even in a, you're gonna get hit. Yeah. Um, no matter how good you are, you're gonna get hit, but it shouldn't throw your game off. Mm -hmm. you should be, your body should be conditioned enough to understand that, okay, I know what it's like to get hit. And, and also when you hit, if, if, you, if you practice hitting full contact, you'll hit properly with proper technique. Your wrist won't be like that, for example, or your, your kicking, everything will be proper. So when you're in a situation, if you happen to be in one, you're gonna hit full contact, you're gonna hit full force, but with proper technique. Hmm. And Ichigeki, right? Like one strike, certain death. You know, you should be able to take someone out with one strike, hmm. but it has to be accurate, fast, strong, powerful, with proper technique. Hmm. That's why that full contact is so important. Yeah. Um, and you know, when I was watching your students, you know, Andy and uh, what was the other gentleman's name? They were sparring. Um, oh, uh, Petrov. 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 Yeah. Still um, Petrov. You know, I mean, they weren't even going 100 percent. Oh no, 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 know? no, no, 50 percent. But you know, I, I was looking at that, and mm, you know, <laughs> it was like that. Yeah. they were pretty tough. Um, I think that the, you know, for me, it's hard to see the stuff coming too, because you know, oftentimes the round kick is is chambered mm -hmm. straight up. And it comes out of nowhere, you know. So and then if you fake it with a Brazilian or something, I mean, it's all, yeah, it's dangerous for sure. I mean, I just uh, you know when we uh, we met at the the Black House uh, and you know you brought you guys down and we were training with, right. with Chinga Machida. That's right. I uh, I got a chance to spar with Daniel and some of the others, and I just found it, man. I just can't I can't read you guys. You know the 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 timing was uh, it, it just really threw me. You know so. Um, well, you just said something about the chamber of the leg when you all your kicks the knee has to come up. But then you should be able to throw three, four, five different types of kicks, chambering the same way every right. time. <laughs> That's what's dangerous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I th you know, I mean, uh, back in the day when I when I used to watch VHS, you know, I used to watch you know Brazilian, uh, like um, what was his name, Francisco Filho. Oh, amazing. You know, uh, Kenji Midori and Andy Hug. Oh yeah, Andy Hug. You know, and it'd be just like. Wow, I know. that's that's you know, they were amazing technicians. You know, it wasn't you know they were tough to be sure, but uh, just uh, amazing technique. You know, this yeah. is you did the keyhole with us, keyhole of yes. the warm up. Mm -hmm. 
this is a critical part of Kyokushin because it's about repetition. Mm. We do it every class. Uh, I did it a little different tonight in this, in the, because of the interest of time and sure. things like that. And you were here and you don't know a lot of some of the stuff. So mm -hmm. um, we did an abbreviated version of it, but we do the Kihon every class. It's our warm-up. It's a 20-minute warm-up. All the pit kicks, you know, all the strikes, all the blocks, everything. Mm -hmm. um, because it's over and over and over and over again yeah. for, for perfection. We're striving for perfection. We never mm -hmm. get there. Mm -hmm. But everything's about striving for perfection, which is why we do so many kata as well, which yes. is a metaphor sure. for life, actually. Yeah. Yeah. But um, yeah, the kata is incredibly important for perfecting your technique. For I mean, There's so many reasons the kata is important. Mm -hmm. But mostly it's... Uh, it's a metaphor for life, but strive for perfection and always trying to improve yourself little by little. When you're doing your kata, practicing your kata, you have to be present, hmm. mentally present. You can't have your mind wandering. And when we go outside the dojo and with work and with all these other things we do in life, you have to be present yeah. and aware. And I think the kata, practicing kata really helps in that respect. Hmm. It, 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 it forces you to be present and forces you to perfect things. Mm. And we're always trying to perfect ourselves. So it's mm. a, it's a, it's, I think that's missed with a lot of people, mm. yeah, especially fighters. They, they miss the perfection of character, the perfection of technique, the perfection of the breath, awareness, presence of mind, all these things that are really important with kata. Yeah. It doesn't mean you, you, you're not a fighter because you like kata more or fighting more. I mean, it's all the same. It's all one. Yeah. Uh, Interesting. And, um, I agree. I, uh, you know, we kata is a great way to practice when you got nobody around too. Yeah. You know. And, yeah, it is. And it's like uh, you don't. People go, oh well, I'm never going to do that in a fight. Well, no, you won't. There'll be a modification of that. Sure. Though. Sure. Well, and, I'm uh, not going to stand around like this either. Yeah, you, know, yeah. so, <laughs> you know. So um, I hear you. You know, years ago, I, uh, back in, in 1989 or so, I, I worked on a film called Karate Kid 3. I got mm -hmm. a chance to work with Ralph Macchio and Pat Morita and, uh, of course, uh, you know, Fumio de Mura. Um, the writer of that film is named Robert Mark Kamen, and he's a goju stylist. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's how the whole Mr. Miyagi character mm -hmm. came about. He named it Chojin. after Chojin Chojin Miyagi. Miyagi sure. But he was telling me, he goes, yeah, I'm, I'm working on a, on a, on a movie. Um, a version of the Punisher, and I said, "Oh, really?" And he goes, "Yeah, I got Dolph Lundgren as the mm. Punisher." And he says, "And he's the real deal. He's Kyokushin guy, yeah, you know." Is. And the stunt guys, you know, he just he just gets these Kyokushin guys, and they just take it, you know. Well, <laughs> Dolph, uh, you know, you know, obviously, I work with Dolph all yeah, the time. In fact, yeah. I, I talked to him last night. He's in Italy. That's why he wasn't here tonight. With oh, us. okay. Um, but one of the guys that was in that movie with him was was Yamaki. He was oh, world champion. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I, you know, I, I remember, you know, Yamaki Sensei has a dojo in Torrance, mm -hmm. and, you know, he had a, a DVD that came out on Black Ball Magazine, and I, you know, normally, you know, I don't show up at somebody's dojo unannounced, but, you know, I, I was hoping that he would have a copy of the DVD, and I wanted to buy it, and then he would sign it, and I walked into his dojo, and it was him and another gentleman working Tushiki. out. And they looked at me, I walked in the door, and I was trying to be really respectful, but I felt like... They were gonna kill me. Like you know, they just looked at me, and I was like, "Uh, I, I want to buy a DVD." And uh, he said, "Oh, internet." And uh, oh. you know, he, he and then he broke a smile. But I think at first he was wondering, you know, what is this dude doing yeah. in here? You know, he's a really. Uh, yeah. I'm a, I'm a fan of of Yamaki's, and we've trained together many times. And he's just a wonderful guy. We've had many meals together. Mm. He's a He's an inspiration, yeah. He's, he's, he's got a great story too. Yeah, you know, he was bullied and you know, mm -hmm. and all that stuff. Yeah. But yeah, what a, what a tremendous guy! And uh, sure, you know, I hope I get a chance to meet him again, and you know, perhaps uh, you know, it'll be a little bit more uh, <laughs> warm and fuzzy. But I just got out of there quick because I was like, these dudes look like they're about to kick my ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they will. Um, so I, I, you know, I, I always ask this of uh, my guests here. Um, what is it that you want to impart to uh, your students? You know, uh, Sheila and Tom Callahan, what, what do you want to, um, you know, your students to have taken away from you? You know, why, you know, why do you do martial arts? What is the philosophy behind mm -hmm. it? And if you can just impart one thing to your students, what would it be? Character mm -hmm. development. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As I always tell the students, I mean, the likelihood of getting in a fight is pretty remote, but if the something arises, you can take care of yourself. So to train three, four days a week for years, 
when you probably will never get in a fight, then why are you here? Mm -hmm. Why are you training? Just because you might get in a fight? I doubt it. They may not even know the answer to that question if I ask it. But over time, the training, I think they become better people, more humble, uh, kind, mm. thoughtful of others, um, which it all plays into your character. And um, I really believe this. I know, I know this helped me, and this is why I, I, I talk about it, because I think it's, this is what it's about. It's about character development, really. And to, to just improve yourself, constantly striving for perfection in mind, body, character, mm. and, uh, and that's a process. I mean, there's no end to it. There's no finality to it. It's mm. just a process and then you die, mm. <laughs> you know? Right. But, um, sure. but as, if you can do something for yourself every day and then, I hate to use the word pay it forward, but you know what I mean? To lead by example, mm -hmm. try to inspire others. Um, and it's just like it's a domino effect. So I don't like bullies. I don't like people that are in my dojo that are trying to show off or be the toughest guy. I want people in my dojo that are the kindest and nicest guys that happen to know how to fight. Yeah. But that's just a byproduct, a residual byproduct of the training. It's not the reason you should be here necessarily. Hmm. Everyone has their own reasons why they come and train, but I think ultimately if you train long enough, uh, this kind of concept starts to emerge and, and you start to think about it more. Mm. It's hard for me to say it to them and tell them that they have to kind of discover that for themselves. And they start seeing a change in themselves and hopefully they like the change. Right. And, they, and they attribute it hopefully to their training. Mm. And they go, oh, I'm gonna keep going back because I like what this is doing to me. Right, right. Yeah. That's awesome. I want to thank you for uh, oh, thank you. what an honor and a pleasure it was. Uh, I appreciate you being here. Not only to train with you, but uh, to be able to talk with me a little bit and, uh, and share with our audience. Uh, you know, uh, when I first met you, it was at the uh, Chinzo Machida seminar. And I'm a huge fan of Chinzo's if you're watching this. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we've been able to keep in touch over. And, mm -hmm. I, you know, I just said, you know, I really dig this dude. Oh, um, and, <laughs> and, you know, I was like, hey, do you want to be on 52 Masters? And you were like, ah. I, you know, I'm no, I'm not a master, and I'm like, you know, you know, you're 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 plenty fine to me, you know. <laughs> and it's, it's a it's a hard word to listen to hear. Yeah, and I'm certainly not a master at, at all. Well, just I, the, the stripes and the belt hmm. um, uh, don't mean anything. It's um, it's just I know this much, <laughs> you know, and I know maybe a little more than somebody else. That's it. Well, <laughs> Everyone I, knows more than the other person. It's sure. just it's just the way it is. But, you know, thank you so much. Oh, you know, what you. a pleasure. Yes. You know, once again, uh, Shihan Tom Callahan. Thank you. And this is 52 Masters, and we'll see you next time. Oh,